Hi everyone. Today's video is going to be geared towards uh, Teen Art Studio and Art 4. And those two classes are the highest level art classes that I teach at um, GIFT and at Heritage. And um, I also want to talk a little bit about, um, I want to feature another artist that you may or may not be familiar with. And today the artist is um, a contemporary artist. And if you're not familiar with that term, or maybe you've heard of it, but you're not sure what it means, a lot of people get confused, um, you know, between modern artist and contemporary artist. Well, what I mean by contemporary artist is that it's an artist that is uh, currently living in our time and, um, you know, any artwork that was really done in the um, 20th century and um, up through today would be considered more of a contemporary artist. So it's not so much a style of, of what they're doing. It's not, modern art is more of a, um, a style of art. Um, anyway, the, the contemporary artist I wanna talk about today is Ron DeCiani, and I actually, um, wrote his name on the board here in case you want to look him up and do a Google search or something. Uh, that's how you spell it, Ron DeCiani. And uh, he's one of my favorite artists. He's a Christian artist and his artwork is, uh, he's really devoted to um, illustrating stories from the Bible, uh, people from the Bible, um, he, he is amazing. And um, here's one of my favorite paintings that he's done. This one is called Angels Unseen. And if you look closely next to the window, it's, it features a mother praying over her daughter. And um, you can see that there are what looks like um, the silhouette or the shadow of two angels standing guard next to the window. And uh, this was kind of a companion piece to another painting he did called Spiritual Warfare. And that one featured a father praying over his son. Um, I'll, I'll show you another one of my favorite paintings that he did. This one, it might be hard to uh, see it in the video, but you can do a Google search and it's called Simeon's Moment. And it's, um, you might remember Simeon from the New Testament in the Go uh, Gospels, where um, he had waited his whole life um, to see the coming of Messiah, that the Lord had promised that he would see, would see uh, the Lord, the Messiah come. And so he just so happened to be at the temple when um, Mary and Joseph brought Jesus to be dedicated at the temple. And um, of course, it was no accident, but uh, here's the moment where uh, Ron DeCiani captures the moment where, where Simeon sees Jesus and he holds him knowing that he is the Savior. And uh, I just love this. If you look closely, you can see an outline of the continents of the world in his, um, in his cloak or in his robe. <laughs> So, um, and you can just see the joy on his face. So anyway, that's another one of my favorite paintings. Um, this painting, a dear friend of mine, Dawn, gave this to me as a gift and I, and I love it. Um, so check out Ron DeCiani and uh, you'll, you'll love his work like I do, I'm sure. Okay, so this lesson is gonna be on drawing carnations. And um, the reason I chose this flower for teen art and for art four is because to me, I think this is a more challenging flower to draw. Now, you might disagree. We all have our opinions. <laughs> but um, to me, carnations are a much more difficult flower to draw because of all the details, all the um, petals, the wavy, tiny little wavy lines, and just the the um, the details of the of the carnation are hard to really capture and make look realistic. Um, before I start, though, I wanted to mention that uh, in a previous video, in the irises video, I talked about painting 
irises and I mentioned that if you didn't have any canvas at home uh, and you're desperate for something to, to paint on with your acrylic paints, um, you could cut up a cereal box or um, some other cardboard box and use that as a canvas. So I just wanted to show you, I actually did that. I painted this little iris <laughs> and I painted it on the back of a cracker box. So um, here's my cracker box. I just cut it apart. And instead of using the shiny printed side, I used the, the um, cardboard side. But again, you could use cereal boxes, um, you know, pasta boxes, uh, crackers, whatever you might have at home. And that can be um, an option for you if you have no canvas at home. All right, so back to the carnations. Here's a drawing I did of carnations. And I also did one in uh, colored pencil. And so let's get started. Here's some photos of real carnations. Notice all the details of the petals. And you'll also see that they come in lots of different colors. There's lots of different styles of carnations. Uh, this happens to be a drawing of a carnation I found online by someone named Brenda Hill. And I thought it was excellent, so I just wanted to show you. So again, I feel like uh, the carnation is a little more challenging to draw um, because of all these petals that are layered on top of each other or next to each other and all the little wavy lines. Uh, I'm gonna focus on drawing the carnation more from a, a profile view. So instead of drawing it looking straight ahead, I'm gonna do this type of um, perspective, this, this view like a profile. Um, so let me start with the basic shape and I'm going to start with, I think technically it's called the calyx, uh, or the sepal perhaps of the flower, which you can just kind of draw, um, a big letter U and this is what's going to lead into the stem of the flower. And then the basic shape I'm gonna use for this carnation. Now you could do kind of a fan shape like this if you wanted. Um, I'm gonna use more of a, what I would call like a bean, a bean shape. So it's gonna kind of curve like that. That's gonna be my basic shape for my carnation. And so I'm gonna to come to the center and I'm just gonna start by drawing some of these curved lines just to get me started. And I'm gonna add a wave to those lines and they're gonna be quite wavy, like this. And what I can do is come back in, wavy and I'm coming up and then I'm curving around and coming back in. And so I'm just getting started. Now, if you don't do enough of these and you don't do any shading, uh, your, your flower, I mean, it'll be a nice drawing, but it won't be as realistic. If you take the time to do lots of petals, add lots of petals, and here I'm even adding kind of a, um, a little notched cutout in my petal there. The more you add, and of course, when you add shading, the more realistic your carnation is gonna look. Uh, this is just gonna be a very basic carnation as you practice and get more um, experienced with it. You can add you know, curves like this, as if the petal is kind of um, curving and, and uh, overlapping and, um, you're seeing both sides of the curve of the petal. So I'm just adding lots of petals and curves, and I wanna add some more detail here. This, this flower, I'm imagining it's opened so much that these petals here are drooping forward and overlapping this part of the flower. In other words, like in this flower, you see the top of this and all the petals are going up. 
I'm gonna draw it as if these petals are folding down. Ah, like that, okay. Uh, I do have a couple, these, these carnations, they're, um, they're very dry and they're starting to, you know, they're very wilted, but I wanted to hang on to them to show you how, um, this is a real tiny little carnation, but those petals again are drooping forward. All right. So I'm going to add just a little bit more detail here. In fact, I think I'm going to separate this into two petals. And I'm going to add some curvy lines here and curvy lines here just to add some more detail. All right, so there's the basic drawing of my flower. I do want to add, there's kind of a, um, like an oval shape base here that you can add. Um, and you can even add kind of a wavy V shape like that. Um, the leaves on the carnation are very thin, wavy lines and very pointy like that. Um, and they curve a lot. So here I'm gonna draw a leaf and I'm gonna add the other side of it here like that. So very skinny, very wavy, like that. Okay, so there's the basic uh, drawing and now I'm going to start to add some shading. So if you're gonna do just pencil shading like this, I would recommend Definitely using some B pencils like uh, 4B or 6B um, so that you have a darker, softer pencil and you can get some of these dark values in much easier. Um, if you wanna do one in colored pencil, here's one that I did in colored pencil. And so I used, on this one I did two different shades of blue and I also, of course, used um, a variety of um, pressure as I colored. I applied a lot of pressure in the dark areas and light pressure in the light areas. I did also outline this with um, like a micron um, pen, like a very um, ultra fine tip marker. And uh, so I just very delicately um, outlined it and I added some stippling in the back. Uh, in the background. So, but for this one, I'm gonna use um, pencil, graphite pencil. So, of course, you can probably figure out where the dark shadowy parts would be, down here in the center, and just kind of think about where um, some cast shadow would be. What I mean by cast shadow is like, if this is a petal that's in front, then it's gonna have some shadow next to it, like this, on this petal. And of course, having some blending tools would be very helpful. If you don't have blending tools at home, you could use your finger. You guys have heard me say before that technically you're not supposed to use your finger because of the, the oils on your skin. But if you don't have a blending tool, um, you can just use your finger and I may end up doing, I've been thinking about doing a video on how to make your own blending tools at home. So I may do that. You can subscribe. If you uh, hit subscribe on this uh, video underneath, then you will be notified anytime I upload a new video. All right, so I'm just shading. And what I'm gonna do is put this on fast motion as I shade my carnation, and you can uh, just take a few minutes to watch.
Okay, so I think you guys get the idea. Obviously, I could spend a lot more time refining this and changing some things, adding some more shading, softening some things. Um, you probably noticed that I did pull out my eraser a little bit, and this is a big, chunky eraser. If you have a smaller eraser, like on the end of your pencil, or if you have a small erasing tool, or even um, a kneaded eraser is great. You can just kind of pull it apart. I love kneaded erasers and you can just kind of form it into a small little piece and then you can erase and uh, of course it's not just for taking away mistakes but it's for creating highlight you of course want to have some highlights in your drawing so that you notice that I left some areas um more white and I didn't add a lot of shading there. So I can spend more time working on this, but you guys get the idea. And um, again, if you want to also do one, I'd like you to do one in pencil and then one in colored pencil. So um, the carnation can be any color you want. Um, they come in lots of different colors. Also, real quick, I wanted to show you what, um, now th th these are dried carnations, but um, you can kind of see what the, the little buds look like. And, um, you know, the little leaves. So if you even wanted to add, add some of those um, buds in your, in your drawing like this. you know, that might be a nice, um, whoops, a nice addition to add some of these little, little buds that haven't, you know, carnations that haven't opened yet. So that's just an idea. Anyway, I'd love to see your drawings when you're done. So please, Send them to me either in an email or a text or upload them to our Facebook page. Just a few closing words, a um, few comments on your Complete the Face projects. If you are currently working on those in your sketchbook, here's just an example of one I did a few years ago. Um, if you're still working on those, please continue. Hopefully you have some B pencils at home. Um, don't forget the value scale. You want to have some really dark darks using like a 4B or a 6B or an 8B. And then you also want to have some uh, very light lights, right? So uh, make sure you have a lot of contrast and you're trying to match the values that you see in your reference picture when you're completing the face. So hopefully you have some of those at home. If you don't, it might be really hard to complete that project for now. Um, but hopefully we'll be seeing each other again soon. All right, thanks everyone and have a great day.